Okay, so in this episode, I'm gonna show you how to make one of my all-time favorite desserts. Growing up as a kid in Britain, I think it's most people's. I'm gonna show you how to make the most lightest rice pudding mousse. I've got a delicious hay ice cream, some blackberries which have been soaked in some port, some toasted almonds, and then it's finished with some delicious caramelized milk skin. So let's start cooking. First things first, I'm gonna show you how to make the rice pudding and the caramelized milk skin for this dessert. So really, really simple. Rice pudding rice has to be rice pudding rice. Don't use a Borea risotto rice. Don't use basmati rice, it will not work. Rice pudding rice you can buy in any supermarket. You can buy it online, it can get delivered to your door. So rice pudding rice, double cream, sugar, milk, and a fresh vanilla pod. So what we do is milk in the pan, double cream, goes in as well, add our sugar, in we go, in with our rice, get our vanilla pod, you can also buy these in the supermarkets now too, they are expensive, you know you can use vanilla essence, you can use vanilla pastes, um, I just prefer to use the real thing, especially when people are coming to the restaurant and they're paying a lot of money to eat your food. They expect the best quality ingredients, but if you're doing it at home, by all means, use vanilla essence or vanilla paste or even vanilla seeds you can buy. With your pod, pop that in there as well. That's got lots of flavoring. And then just with the back of your knife, just scrape the seeds out like I've done there. You'll see them at the end of the knife. That's all the goodness. Back of your finger, just straight in the pan. And all you need to do now leave that on the stove until it's overcooked so there's no bite in the rice at all you're just left with a thick cooked rice pudding that's going to probably take around 30 to 35 minutes now once that's been on the stove for 30 to 35 minutes i've got some here which has been on the stove for that time anyway and this has been cooked down so you can see how much it's reduced the liquid's reduced by more than half the rice is cooked it's nice and thick you can see the texture, you can see the lovely vanilla beans in the rice as well. So all I want you to do with that now is take it off the heat, allow it to cool. You can pour it into a tray. I'm lucky enough to have a large fridge. Just get your rice pudding, stick it straight in the fridge. Once it's in the fridge, this is what it will come out like. It comes out really, really thick, like a paste, almost you can still see that there's textures of rice in there. So all I want you to do now, next stage, we've got our double cream. So all I want you to do, give that a nice little whisk. You don't want to whisk this too much, but you want to have enough body in there so it's got a nice little thickness. Once the cream is whisked, that's when We'll go to the part which is where we're going to fold the double cream and the rice pudding together and then we're going to set them in a mould. See how it's going nice and thick now. So that's all nice and whisked now. And you just want it to be thick enough just to stay on the whisk. So next stage that we're gonna do. Double cream's ready. Rice pudding's cool. Get yourself a bowl. Add your cold rice pudding to the bowl. Nice and simple. Take our double cream. And we're just gonna fold that in. So it's nice and, nice and airy. Like that. Gonna give that a taste. Delicious. Okay. Next, tray, and I've just put a little bit of greaseproof paper. Move that out of the way. 
underneath. I've got some nice little moulds as well. Rice pudding. Nice good dollar. Push them down. Again. Nice good dollar. Push that down. And then just use your spoon to get in there, just to flatten everything off. Make sure they're quite even. Okay. Give your tray a little bang. Take your rice pudding now. I'm going to set that in the fridge. I usually set this for around an hour and a half, two hours, and they'll firm up really, really nicely, but they'll still be nice and smooth, a bit like a mousse. So I'm going to pop that in the fridge now. So next stage, while the rice pudding is setting in the fridge, I'm going to show you how to make the caramelized milk skin. So caramelized milk skin the part that everybody fights over on the rice pudding. But how do we add that to the dish, which is a little bit more creative? So usually when you bake a rice pudding in the oven, when it comes out the oven, you're left with a big skin film on top. And that's something that growing up as a kid, me and my brother used to fight over all the time. I want the rice pudding skin. So I thought if I'm going to reinvent a rice pudding dish, I need that element on there. And it's a little bit chefy and it tastes amazing. Everybody will be fighting over it. So what we do is dead, dead simple, full fat milk, none of this semi skimmed milk, no skimmed milk, no dairy-free milk. It needs to be full fat milk into a tray. Now I'm lucky I've got a big tray because we're obviously in work and we're in the kitchen, but by all means, you can use a pan, a large pan like this. You can put it in a pan, do it exactly the same way, pop it in the oven. And all we do to that is we just add a little bit of sugar Give that a stir. This is like the most amazing milk at the end of your cereal. Test if it's sweet enough. Definitely sweet enough. The reason that we add so much sugar to it and test if it's sweet enough is because for in order for the milk to caramelize, it needs the sugar in there. That's gonna help that skin form on top of the rice pudding. Milk now has got the sugar added to it. So we're gonna put that in the oven. I have my oven on about 180 degrees. Now everybody's oven's different, I understand that at home. One thing that I'll say is people always say, well, how long does it go in the oven for? It goes in the oven until you can see that the film on top of the milk has formed a golden skin. Now, if your oven at home differs from my industrial ovens in work, it could take 20 minutes, it could take 30 minutes, it could take 35. What I suggest you do is, when I take my milk out of the oven now, just have a look at the consistency it needs to be. Uh, because I can put a time in the recipe, but I'd probably gauge for us doing it at home, always add an extra 10 minutes. So probably say about 30 minutes, it's gonna take you in your home oven. So milk goes into the oven, 180 degrees. Milk comes out the oven and you can see there's already a skin that's formed on top of the milk because it's been in the oven. And that's where the sugars of, you know, they've soaked into the milk as well. It's created this caramelized effect in the oven, which caramelizes the milk skin. So the next stage for this, which is like really, really simple, and this is quite fun actually, is get yourself a tray. I've got a wire rack and use cling film on it. Cling film all the way around it. You can cling film around a tray. You can cling film around, uh, I don't know, the back of a dish that's gonna go in the oven. And all I want you to do is just watch because it will be hot. You'll see the milk skid on top of the milk. Peel the layers of milk and just lay them onto your tray. And you can already see that with the cold air, they're starting to set and go all caramelized in a nice way. And just continue that process with the milk. Like I said, be careful, it is hot. You can allow it to cool. It doesn't matter if you get a little bit of excess milk on there as well, because that's gonna dry out. Keep on peeling your milk off. You'll see it's formed a skin on top, like that, milk skin. Okay, continue doing that. And you can, if you need more milk skin, all I suggest you do is just keep putting your milk back in the oven until the milk's totally evaporated and run out the tray. That's what we do. We don't carry up, tip all that milk away now and not use it. We just continually put it in the oven until we've got lots and lots of milk skin. So get rid of that tray now. Pop that over there. Now this is the next process of this. It's where you turn your oven down to 60 degrees. 
you pop your tray in the oven and just leave it in the oven for about 30 to 40 minutes. And then what you'll end up with is these big shards of milk skin, which when you break them, they've got a nice crisp crunch. And they're absolutely amazing. So they're gonna go on top of the finished dish right at the end. But these are great for a snack. These are great if you've made ice cream with the kids at home or you've even bought some ice cream. Just smash them up and just sprinkle them all over the top. Everybody will be happy with that. So then, milk skin in the oven, and you'll see that they'll go really, really crisp. Take them out of the oven, just store them in an airtight container. They'll last you about two or three days. Right, so now we've got our milk skin. All we're waiting for now is the rice pudding to set up. So I'll go and check on the rice pudding and then we'll finish the dish. Okay, so rice pudding's been in the fridge now. We're gonna get that out and see if it's set. You can see that's firmed up nicely. All we're gonna do now is get ready to plate up. So we're gonna get our plate. Rice pudding in the center of the plate. Now, we're lucky enough to have a big plumber's blowtorch. At home, if you haven't got a blowtorch, uh, it's really handy if you go and get one because you can use it for lots of things like blowtorch on the top of a creme brulee. You can just get the little ones. They sell them in supermarkets and stuff now as well. So, what I'm gonna do, blowtorch the ring off. And here, I've just got some blackberries, which I've just macerated or just soaked in a little bit of port. Just pop three nice little blackberries on there. In here, nothing fancy at all. I've just got some almonds, which have been toasted, and then I just give them a nice little blend. It's a good little sprinkle of the almonds on top. A bottle. Inside here, I've just had Granny Smith apples, cook them down on the stove with a little bit of brown sugar, and then blend them up. So we've just got a little bit of apple puree. I'm gonna sprinkle a little bit of that over the top. Apple and blackberries, let me know, work absolutely amazing together. With this dish, I serve something a little bit more unusual than just your run-of-the-mill vanilla ice cream. Uh, we've got a hay-infused ice cream, so we toast the hay and we infuse the ice cream base. So if you guys wanna do that at home and suggest any sort of ice cream, you can use a nice vanilla, a blackberry sorbet, anything from the supermarket will work really, really well with this dish. So, nice little ice cream scoop on top. And then all we're gonna finish that with is we're gonna get our nice caramelized milk skin shards. Just gonna stick that on top. Be really, really generous with this. You want it to look beautiful. Put them into the ice cream. And that's the dish. Vanilla ice pudding with blackberries, toasted almonds, hay ice cream, and caramelized milk skin. <laughs>